Hey guys, so uh, I'm sorry it's been a little while since <laughs> the last video. We've been uh, a little busy, but um, today I want to do a little video on how to uh, set up uh, an actual gun for making a holster. Now, uh, every gun is going to have its own uh, little pitfalls and everything. So, for instance, you might have uh, like an aggressive rail on the gun or sharp edges or a sharp ejection port. And what you want to do is you want to get started with your mold making process so you can avoid having to fine tune all those features later in the process. Like obviously you want to get a good mold with a lot of good definition, but that definition is a double-edged sword. Uh, you want the holster to look sharp and fit well, but you also don't want to get hung up on things unnecessarily. Now, uh, if you check out uh, SWFL Holsters uh, YouTube channel, you'll see some good videos on how to set up your blue guns so that you can produce more consistent molds and do less fine tuning with the final project, the uh, final product. Um, but what I want to show you today is a good way that you can uh, set up your gun uh, without doing any permanent modifications that are going to help you uh, to create a uh, consistent and smooth drawing holster. Now, if you come over here, we'll take a look at this. This, is, this gun is a good example of this, right? We've got a Sig Sauer 229 uh, E2. And there are a couple features on here that I want to address. For one, it has a sharp rail. And what happens is if you get really good definition, that kydex is going to come down here into these areas um, of the rail and give you uh, problems with your draw. Additionally, it has a relatively sharp uh, trigger guard, which can also hang up. And finally, it has a sharp ejection port, which you're going to want to mitigate overall. So I'll show you how I go about setting this up so that you don't get a lot of trouble with uh, your holster. So the first thing's first. With any, uh, with any pistol, you want to protect it a little bit. Not only does the blue tape create a small amount of clearance, which is going to help keep the holster uh, a smooth drawing uh, product, but it also prevents scratches and uh, allows you to fine tune the fit a little bit and then remove the tape and voila, it fits perfectly. So you're just going to take a little bit of this blue tape put it put it along the slide right, so that's step one and this isn't this portion isn't you know particularly precise so you take your blue tape put it along the slide I'm going to put a little bit along the top of the slide as well Turn your tape here we go So you don't want it to like bunch up in any places because those bunches are going to come out in your mold. So I'm just going to remove some of that. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a piece of dowel and I'm going to create a sight channel, which is an important feature so your front sight doesn't get hung up inside the holster. Uh, if you have a gun that has a plastic front sight, like a, like a, like a factory Glock, um, you can wind up in a situation where over time you can pull the front sight off or deform it or what have you. So you want to avoid that. And, and uh, the sight, you know, on a, a metal sight, like a, like a Trigicon, um, will shred the inside of the holster if you don't account for this clearance. So that's step one. So there we go. We've got our, our slide pr protected and we've got a front sight on. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to address these rails. Now, um, what you can do, you know, you can always make your mold and then come back and heat it up, but it'll look like you heated up that spot. And that's uh, something that you want to potentially avoid. So you, if you want to keep a tight mold, but also selectively reduce definition in a specific area, you can keep using blue tape. And I'll show you what I do here. I'm just going to take this blue tape, I'm going to lay it out, and I'm just going to cut some pieces of it. This is not necessarily precise. It's good to have a little bit of overlap, so I'm going to take this piece. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start blocking this area out. And what's basically the, the object of this is to create a situation where the kydex cannot mold into that little area. And so you're going to block it out with this tape, which is going to you know, let's adjust the size of that a little bit. Because you don't want any wrinkles, right? So we're going to build that up just a little bit in there. 
and create a block. Now what will happen is that the kydex of course is going to form smoothly around the profile of the gun without finding its way into all those little crevices there. So we're going to put a couple pieces of this on here. to build that up and we're going to maintain obviously the same shape of the gun. Um, and then what I do finally is I have this stuff it's called, uh, it's just this like a like a heat proof uh, duct, duct sealing tape, it's the shiny stuff. And what I do is I put another layer of this on because what happens is when this is exposed to enough heat it'll shrink and get a little tighter. Um, and additionally what you'll notice is if you do enough of this the texture from the blue tape can transfer into the interface of the holster. Um, and so basically the texture, the imprint of whatever goes on inside the holster is going to affect some of the friction characteristics in there. So the, uh, the blue tape puts a little bit of a mottled texture in there. However, this is going to put a perfectly smooth texture on the inside, which is going to prevent ex excess friction. So it's going to get tighter and, you know, to, to, to improve the profile of the gun, but it's also going to prevent a little extra friction. So that's, we're going to put a layer of this on here. Just like that. Now I want to address the trigger guard. What can happen really frequently is that you get a really great clear indentation and impression into this area, which uh, is something that you're going to have to fine tune and adjust later. However, the tape is slightly flexible and um, can help mitigate some of that. So I'm going to take another piece of tape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here starting up here on the slide, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it tightly around. All right, so I've got one piece there. So what you can see is even when I squeeze on it, what will happen is that when you put it in the press with all that pressure, yeah, it'll squeeze down and you'll get some definition, but it won't like make quite as aggressive an impression. So I'm going to put a piece of that on there. And then I'm going to take another piece of this for the same reasons that I discussed earlier and uh, install that. Because what can happen is that, you know, the glue will get hot and maybe in the press and as it applies pressure, you can, it'll, it'll squash more. However, this, this uh, silver tape is much more inclined to sort of get tighter and sort of like a, like a heat shrink wrap. So it will uh, tighten itself up and help prevent too much of that excessive uh, impression. Right, take that. Put that on there, and remember, keep some, keep a little tension on it, and then wrap it all the way around. So, there we go. That's nice and tight. And now, finally, we're going to have an ejection port issue up here. So I'm just going to take this little block, and obviously you can use uh, whatever you want for this process. I use these little wedges because I've got a, a specific reason for that. But you can use those. Um, you can use a strip of that uh, paint stirring, uh, those paint stirring sticks you get from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot whenever you buy a, a can of paint. Those are a nice thin profile if you don't want like a uh, distinctive feature on this area of your gun, on this area of your holster rather. So I'm just going to take a couple of these spare pieces of tape, load them up there. And now we're prepped. Now when we get back, we'll have uh, an impression of this. And uh, so we'll show you how it comes out of the press and then we'll show you the final holster after that. So we come over here and take a look. What you can see is that we've been successful in maintaining the uh, overall profile of the gun with a nice crisp definition without having excessive indentation into this area here. So you can like barely see the imprint of the rail. However, we have maintained this dimension so that it uh, remains, uh, you know, uh, a good snug fit. We also have just a small impingement into the trigger guard here, which will be uh, sufficient for retention, but without causing any kind of shredding inside the holster. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and show you what I'm, show you what we've got working with here. So what you can see is that 
All right, say for example, let's see if we can find a, a, good, a good example of this, okay. So you can see how the tape leaves a little textural imprint in here. I don't know if you can pick that up with the camera. However, this part is smooth and shiny as a result of the um, as a result of the uh, silver ducting tape. You see right here, it's all very smooth and polished because it takes on that imprint. Additionally, another step you can take is that, especially when working with the thinner Kydex, like the uh, 60 thousandths, you can back the heat off. I mean, we talked earlier about uh, the specifications in the knife kit's technical bulletins and how they say that you can push the temperature up to 350 degrees as maximum temperature. That can uh, cause some small problems, especially if you're, you know, you have to really pay really close attention to it because that's like the razor's edge of the material tolerance. So what I do when working with uh, 60 thousandths, you can take a look at the kind of definition we got here. Uh, I didn't push this past uh, 330. So, you know, we didn't get a whole lot of uh, warping or uh, uh, edge deflection, but, uh, you know, especially not within the limits of the, the area we left for ourselves. But, uh, you know, you get really great uh, and more than acceptable definition uh, at that temperature with this thickness of material. So when we get back, we'll have a completed holster and we'll demo the whole thing for you. All right, so here's our completed holster. This thing is completely fresh. Like, it's, like, it's still got, like, a little bit of moisture inside from when I rinsed it out. You know, we haven't touched it. All we've done is rivet it together, as usual. And uh, here we go. We're going to check it out. And there we go. There's no retention issue with this at all. As you can see in here, we're not getting shreds of Kydex. The uh, sharp edge here isn't uh, tearing up the inside of the holster. And we're not getting a like a mar or a scratch on uh, any part of the slide from uh, holstering or reholstering. So, if you set yourself up for success, you plan ahead, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time messing with your holster or uh, doing a whole lot of fine tuning or like really just sort of, you know, going crazy over the, the details. You can set yourself up for uh, an easy time. You just build it into the mold when you do it. So I hope this was a helpful tip and uh, good luck with your projects. You can follow us on uh, Facebook at facebook.com slash filster where you can see what we're up to and where you can share what you're up to.